Okay, so I'd like to take a look and show you how to uh, use a plugin called TablePress with WordPress. So here's, uh, I'm going to give uh, kind of the example. Uh, so here's the old way. Uh, in this example, we've got uh, three columns here. These came out of a spreadsheet originally, and they were just probably uh, copy-pasted. Somebody selected a bunch of cells in the spreadsheet and then pasted it into WordPress. And that created, uh, in HTML terms, uh, a table structure. And that's something that's been around in HTML for a long time, dating back a couple decades. But today, in 2019, when we have responsive sites and things that run on cell phones, we run into problems as we get to a smaller size. And this is pretty close to uh, the dimensions that would display on a cell phone. And you can see the columns are running off the, the right-hand side. And it becomes kind of difficult to uh, view. So we're going to use this plugin called TablePress to import uh, items from a spreadsheet into uh, WordPress in a way that WordPress can do something useful with it and display it appropriately on different devices. So uh, on the site, we've got TablePress installed, and we can find it over here in the left-hand column. Uh, we don't have any tables loaded up yet, and uh, so we're going to need to add a couple new tables. So we've got a, a new table, uh, or we're going to eventually get to imports, and I like to use uh, Google Sheets. This spreadsheet origin originated in an Excel spreadsheet. I like Google Sheets because it exports a nice, easy-to-find CSV file that will work well when we import it into the web. Uh, Microsoft Excel has a couple different CSV export options, and it can be a little confusing. So let's get this moving a little bit. So we actually have uh, three tabs in this spreadsheet. And I believe in the example that we're working with, uh, we're only going to use two tabs. And so we need to do two exports, one export per tab, and then we'll need to do two imports, uh, one import per uh, export. Or for each of the, ex the two exports, we'll do an import. Um, we're not going to do the uh, third tab uh, until I get some further feedback. I think there's uh, some logos and things that'll be, uh, that are being used there. So uh, one other thing, we've got some columns in here uh, that are perfectly fine for spreadsheet formatting uh, and looking at things in the actual spreadsheet, but when we uh, export import this into uh, the web, uh, we aren't going to want these uh, on there. So I'm going to uh, delete each of these out. And we'll get down to just the data, and that's kind of uh, what we want. Sometimes it can even be helpful to double check and make sure you're you're viewing uh, just exactly what you want to export. And we'll come in into the file options here, and we're going to come to download as. And uh, there's only one CSV option with uh, Google Sheets. Makes it nice and easy, uh, and it takes it from the tab that you're looking at. That was the conference attendees tab. I'll pull up. Uh, You'll notice here we've got the name of the spreadsheet on the left in my downloads and then conference attendees, uh, the CSV file there. So I'm going to uh, just uh, make sure that I know what it's called. I'm going to go to the other tab. And again, we've got a couple extra spacer columns that we don't need. Uh, so we're going to select those columns, delete these. This isn't the original spreadsheet. Uh, this is a working copy I have in, in Google Sheets. And again, file download as, oops, I uh, went too fast, and choose the comma separated as values. So now we're going to come in here and we're going to import uh, each of those files. And we have a, a couple different options here, um, but we're going to uh, select a file to upload and we're going to choose the file. We've got a couple different import uh, option or import formats that we could choose from. You could import directly from an XLS or an XLSX file uh, if you wanted to. Oftentimes, the CSV is the safer way to go to get things right. And if you do import from an XLS, XLSX file, make sure you only have one tab in that spreadsheet. If there's multiple tabs, then the import won't work. And it is possible to sort of update a table once uh, you've imported it in. Uh, in this case, we're bringing in brand new tables, so we're going to choose this add as new table, but we could 
uh, replace uh, a table if we had one existing. I can't select any of these because there are no tables on the site yet. Uh, but if I wanted to, if we did have one, I could uh, select that option for replace existing table and then go in and select the table that we're going to replace. Or we could append add to the bottom of an existing table some additional information, which can be uh, in full, uh, useful for doing updates. So I'm going to come in here, uh, choose files, uh, and I'm going to pick the conference attendees first, just to make sure I'm uh, seeing my list. So we'll import that in. Loads in, and uh, I'm going to erase the part with the file name and the CSV. This will become our table name. And you'll notice over here something that's called the short code. Uh, and it's got uh, two square brackets, and inside of those is table space ID equals one. This is the WordPress short code that we're going to need to input these, uh, to add these tables uh, into our other area. And we can now see uh, the data that is uh, in here for each of these. And there are uh, some different things that we can do with the table options uh, in terms of display. Uh, there's also possibilities to do sorts and orders if you want to. Um, in this case, I don't think we want uh, sorts. We can alternate co uh, row colors uh, as well. So I'm going to say the first row of the table is the table header, which uh, that is. These are uh, the years and locations of, of, of a conference event, and then uh, the organizations that uh, went to that event. And we could show the table name. I'm going to uh, uh, go ahead and do that. I'm not going to show the table description. And then there are the features of how to how a user that visits the site might interact with this table once it's loaded up there. Um, so we could uh, just turn them all off if we wanted to. We could paginate it and only show 10 rows per page, and then they'd have to hit something like a more or next button to see additional stuff. Um, we can allow them to sort things. Uh, it might be like ascending or descending order. Um, if, if that's wanted. Now, with our rows, we happen to have something that's got totals, the total number of schools uh, from the spreadsheet that pulled in here. We may or may not want that, but we've got it, and, and it's not my, it's above my pay grade to make that choice. Um, so, but based on the fact that it's there, I'm going to turn off sorting, uh, and someone could go in and filter if they want to, to find the thing they're looking for. Uh, I'm going to turn that off. We don't really need advanced functionality on this particular uh, spreadsheet, um, but it is possible if you've got a more complex spreadsheet and you want people to, you know, maybe look up a name if you have a long list of names or something like that. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'll just turn them all off. I'll hit Save Changes. And uh, I'm going to copy-paste this. Uh, I'd done it once before. I'm doing it again just to make sure I haven't uh, missed it. And then here we have these tabs and what we what the table that we just added are the participating institutions in a better format and so I'm going to come into our Divi uh, builder we use the Divi builder here uh, and I'm going to enable the visual builder such that I can come in here and edit uh, this set of three tabs so there's our participating institutions and just to format correctly. It's loading up in my address bar. I can see it getting ready to spin. Here it goes. Um, gonna not restore. Oops, gotta do it one more time. Okay, there we go. So this is the old HTML that was in there. And this has some fixed width things. It, it sets the total number of pixels at 1037 up here at the top for the table. And, you know, this type of thing for the web, uh, you know, it goes back to almost the, well, the first three or four years of the web. So all we have to do now is paste in that table ID and close out uh, that particular item. Um, so I'm going to come in here, save my work one more time, and 
going to preview this table. This is what the table should look like. Notice the alternating colors for the rows, uh, et cetera. So that's great. And we're going to import in another table. Uh, again, uh, we'll choose the file uploader. This time we're going with the list of conference sponsors. And we're, uh, we do have the option to replace. Now, if we wanted to, we're not going to do that, but we have that option. We want to add a new table, a second table. So we're going to import that. Uh, again, I'm going to clean up my table name. And, and we'll also clean up the description. Uh, the description and table name aren't necessary. Uh, it can be useful uh, to have those clean just in case you want to show that information somewhere, but it's probably not uh, terribly important. Um, the first row is going to have the table header again, and we'll alternate colors. I'm going to turn off the library for the filters and the sorts and, and things of that nature. And then I'm going to hit Save Changes, Saving Successful, the little success message is down here. And then we'll go in to our next section. Um, actually, let me double check my work here too before I uh, we'll come in and save the previous update. We do have the ability to uh, roll back to a previous version of this uh, of this page if we need to. And so these are the institutional members. And the first one on that list was the Blue Ridge Community College. And um, let's see, these are sponsors. Conference sponsors. I don't. Oh, I'm in the wrong field. So I'm glad I double checked that. So I actually <laughs> uh, I was pulling the wrong information, and I should have downloaded this one. So glad I double checked my work. So download as. Um, we'll get that CSV file for the institutional members, and so we're going to come in here now, and oh, we'll import one more table, not the sponsors. We do have the sponsors list if we want to use it, but that was the one I wasn't positive on. And so we'll come in here and grab the institutional members. Hit import. So we're getting a three for on this tutorial. And basically, it's just putting the file name in there, if that wasn't already obvious, into the table name in the description. So we'll clean that up a little bit. This is going to be table three. This one has no, uh, uh, this one had no uh, table headers. We've basically got, uh, and I probably could have uh, cleaned up that one column. We've got a uh, college and we've got a location of the college. So I'll put uh, institution and location for the headers, just to clean that up a little bit for the web presence. We'll turn off the library. Um, and we'll save changes. Now, um, since we have this extra column that we don't really need, it's just going to be some blank space, it is possible to come in here and I believe uh, s uh, I've chosen a column with this checkbox. So the inference is it takes everything in this column. I could have chosen a row, um, but in this case, I've selected a column and I want to, uh, with the selected columns, we have this little section over here I could hide or show. I could duplicate, insert, or delete. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna delete this one. Uh, we have similar functions over on this left side for working with rows. So if we've got a row in here that we don't want, um, we could get rid of a, a row. But in this case, I've checked the box to select column A, and I'm going to delete that. So now we've cleaned it up and we've got uh, just the two columns. I'm going to copy my short code over here, doing that uh, visibly just to make sure that that's obvious. And then I can come in here finally to our tab settings, uh, delete the old, paste in the new, that short code, and come down here to the 
uh, bottom right, save my work. And then exit the visual builder. Uh, this takes us out of our editing uh, mode. And now we can see what the world can see. The world wouldn't see the black bar at the top because um, not logged in, but uh, everything below in the white is what the world would see. So we uh, only made changes to the institutional members tab and the participating institutions tab. Uh, we did not touch the charter members tab, which I believe in the spreadsheet is the conference sponsors. Uh, it's formatted a little different here. I think they're only showing the current year sponsors. So, um, but we could show multiple years if we wanted to uh, for a lot of reasons that doesn't necessarily make sense. Um, and so there you have it. So we've got this cleaned up and this is ready for the web. It even selects a little bit as you hover over it. Uh, and uh, just a little fancier, easier to see. So there you go.